Earlier this year, Windows laptops got what many called the Apple M-Series moment. Qualcomm and Microsoft announced a brand new platform called Snapdragon X, and with it comes Windows on ARM. These machines are supposedly very powerful, very battery efficient, and will still be considerably less expensive than an Apple MacBook, for example. How much of this was PR fluff and how much of it was actually true? Well, I went all in on a Snapdragon X Elite laptop to find out for myself. And now I'm stuck. Should I stay or should I go? So this is the Dell XPS 13 9345. It's running on the most advanced Snapdragon X Elite processor. But I'm not really gonna go over the specifics of this particular machine. I'm gonna show you some specs just so you have an idea of what I'm working with, but this is not a review of this particular laptop. Instead, this is about my experience using this laptop exclusively as my work and play machine for over a week. To give you an idea of where I'm coming from, the laptop that I was using before I made this switch was the Asus ZenBook 14 Pro OLED, which I got in 2023. That has an Intel 13th gen processor and an NVIDIA 4050 GPU built right in. And what is it like moving from that to something like this? Well, let's start with the biggest thing that you probably have on your mind, which is apps. Because the Snapdragon X Elite processor is a wholly different architecture from what you get from an Intel or AMD processor, Windows on ARM is built different and therefore has different requirements for app compatibility. Windows on ARM has existed for a long time, seven years at least by now. And because of that, Windows and Microsoft have had a lot of time to catch up with making sure that apps have ARM versions. However, we're still in a mixed bag situation where some apps will work and some apps won't. Nearly every app I rely on for my day-to-day -day work life has an ARM version nowadays. That includes Chrome, every app in the Microsoft Office suite, Adobe Photoshop, Slack, the list goes on. These apps work flawlessly on this ARM laptop. But what about the apps that don't have native ARM versions? The ones that are still designed for x64 and x86 architecture? Well, Microsoft has an emulator called Prism that's built into Windows on ARM machines. When you install an x86 or x64 program, Prism takes over in the background and installs that app just as you would normally see it installed on a regular Windows machine. The emulation layer then emulates that app and it works pretty much like it would on an Intel or AMD processor. Apps in this category include Adobe Lightroom Classic, Adobe Premiere Pro, Plex, Asana, and a bunch of other apps that didn't have native ARM versions. Although these apps worked just fine, there are some performance hits. Notably in the Plex app, launching the app and then navigating around the UI was noticeably slower than it is on my X64 machine. Finally, there are just some apps that don't work at all. They don't have ARM versions and when Prism tries to emulate them, it just doesn't work. This includes Adobe Audition, Proton VPN, along with a bunch of other VPNs, and most notably, the Google Drive for desktop app. Now, there are some workarounds here. For example, there's a app called WireGuard that you can install that allows you to connect to VPN nodes for the VPN service that you pay for. So I was able to get my VPN working through that. But Google Drive for desktop, there is no workaround for that. And that's a huge app for a lot of people. And it might be a deal breaker for most people watching this. There is a website that attempts to give you an idea of all the programs available and whether or not they have native ARM versions or are successfully emulated through the Prism emulator. I will leave a link to that down in the description. So with the programs that do work, how do they perform? Well, let me start first by talking about Windows itself. Windows on ARM, when it first launched, was really, really bad. Animations were janky and moving around the operating system was slow and clunky. But Microsoft has clearly done a lot of work here because Windows on ARM on this machine was incredible. Moving around the operating system felt just as good as moving around on an X64 machine. In fact, sometimes it was even better. I saw lots of smooth transitions and I didn't feel any lag whatsoever opening up settings panels, launching apps, and all that kind of stuff. Some of the apps that are designed specifically for ARM also work 
worked better than what I've seen on my Intel laptop. For example, Chrome was noticeably faster and noticeably smoother on this Dell machine than it was on my Asus machine. This was a totally wonderful surprise because I was just so used to Chrome being a clunky mess to have it actually work smoothly on a laptop for once was pretty impressive. Even when you move away from the ARM optimized apps, I saw a lot of great performance for the emulated apps. Even for heavy workload situations like exporting 50 images in Adobe Lightroom Classic, for example, that went fine without a hitch just as fast as it did on my Intel machine. Aside from a handful of apps having a little bit less performance than they would on my Intel machine, there is no reason that this Dell XPS 13 couldn't be your productivity workhorse. Assuming, of course, that you do not rely on Google Drive for desktop. Okay, so we need to talk about battery life, which is one of the most important things that people are probably wondering about when it comes to Snapdragon X laptops. By far, one of the biggest problems in the X64 laptop world is battery life. You can have the most powerful machine that you've ever wanted, but the battery life is going to be terrible. And even if you get a machine that's optimized for battery life, it's still not gonna come anywhere near as good as a recent M-series MacBook. Using Windows on ARM on this Copilot Plus PC, it was very, very clear just how much better it is at power efficiency. I am blown away by how good the battery life is on this laptop. Gone are the days where I had to imagine to myself, oh, when am I gonna next be near an outlet so I can make sure I can juice up my laptop for the rest of my workday. I used this for a full eight hour workday without a charge and was still left with about 25% battery left over. And that wasn't like a pared down experience where I tried to make sure that the battery lasted as long as possible. No, that was with brightness to the max, the screen never turning off, using all my basic productivity apps, watching videos, and most notably, listening to music streamed from my Plex server the entire time through my Bluetooth headphones. Getting eight hours of juice out of a laptop in this scenario is something that is just not possible with an X64 laptop. So being able to do it was incredible on this Windows on ARM machine. The bottom line here is that if all you care about is battery life on your Windows laptop, you want a Windows on ARM machine. Speaking of my Bluetooth headphones, everything hardware wise that I connected to this laptop also just worked just like it would when I was connecting it to any x86 or x64 laptop that I've owned in the past. That includes my Bluetooth headphones, monitors, laptop docks, mice, keyboards, my audio interface, you name it, it just worked. With the laptop dock, through one cable, I was able to power this laptop and run two external monitors, both at 1440p with 120 hertz refresh rates. Not only did this thing hold up, but the fans didn't even spin up during that process. It was pretty incredible. Also, my Sony DualSense controller, wirelessly connected to this with no problem, but gaming on this laptop is a non-starter. There were so many problems trying to play games with it that I cannot recommend this laptop or probably any Windows on our machine at the moment for anyone who's looking to play games. One of my favorite games of all time, Horizon Forbidden West, didn't even launch on this. If you just hit the play button while launching it through Steam, nothing happens. Another one of my favorites, the Resident Evil 4 remake did launch, but it was very slow. And then when I actually tried to play the game, it just crashed. Meanwhile, Baldur's Gate 3, which is a newer game, actually played flawlessly on this laptop. And the reason for that is, is that I think Microsoft and Qualcomm spent a lot of time optimizing that particular game for Snapdragon laptops. That way they could show it off during their press releases and all those kinds of things. Not every game has had the same level of attention that Baldur's Gate 3 got. So it's kind of misleading when Microsoft shows off how well that game runs on these laptops because that makes people think that all games are going to run well, but that is simply not true. With these machines, it's not a question of frame rates or a question of whether you should play on high or medium quality settings. It's a question of whether or not the game will even launch. Simply put, if gaming is at all important to you, 
stay far away from this laptop or any laptop running a Snapdragon X processor. It'll be years before even the majority of your gaming library will run on this, let alone all of it. After spending this week with the Dell XPS 13 on a Snapdragon X Elite processor, I'm left in a huge conundrum. On the one hand, this laptop has all the performance that I could ever want and battery life that was absolutely incredible. That alone makes me want to get rid of my Intel laptop and go all in on Snapdragon so that I can have the productivity machine that I've always wanted. On the other hand, the fact that it's missing fundamental programs such as VPNs and most integrally Google Drive for desktop combined with the fact that I literally cannot play any games on this makes me think to myself that I want to throw this thing away and go right back to Intel. Ultimately, I think I'm going to stick with my Intel laptop for now. However, using this laptop for this past week has really made me excited for what Qualcomm and Microsoft could do with Snapdragon X and Windows on ARM PCs. Really, if it can make it so that I can use Drive for Desktop and play at least the majority of my games on it, then I would throw every Intel laptop I have away and go all in on this permanently. From using this for the past week, it's clear that that future is multiple years away. So unfortunately guys, I'm gonna have to go back to Intel. But I wanna know what you think. Have you gone in with buying a Snapdragon X machine? If so, which one did you end up buying? And if you haven't, let me know what laptop you're looking at instead over something like this. In the meantime, I will see you in the next video.